Okay, so let's do an alcohol wash with a beehive. Now this is the most destructive mite, treat, mite test because it does kill the bees, um, but it's also the most accurate. So if you're wanting to be really accurate on your varroa mite counts, um, an alcohol wash is by far the most accurate method. So I've got my uh, easy tester here, easy check uh, varroa thing. We, we sell these, I highly recommend them. They're pretty easy to use all in one piece. Uh, I've got my alcohol and I'm gonna usually put about two cups of alcohol into this container uh, before I get my bees. So the more the merrier on the, uh, the alcohol wash, but usually about two cups or pretty much one of these containers, about, about two thirds of this container. So I've got my alcohol ready. I've got my tester ready. Now I've got to get the bees and I want to pull bees out of the brood nest area. I've also got my piece of paper that I'm going to shake the bees on to then funnel them, to shake them into the test. So let's, let's find some bees. So I've got a, I, I usually recommend doing a test in early July. Most people harvest their honey around the 4th of July. And this year is really no different. Most regions here in the next week or so, you're, you're good to go pulling your honey. Uh, but usually I do a mite test after I pull my honey, as long as it's not later than I'd say mid-July, uh, then I'll do my mite test after I pull honey because I'm not really gonna be able to do anything about the mite counts until I've got all these honey supers off. So, but for the, since we haven't harvested honey on these bees yet, I am going to just pull the super off got about 40 pounds in it that was a good one pull my queen excluder off and now I'm going to get a frame of bees you can get it out of the top brood box that's fine I'm going to get a frame of bees that we're going to use to do this mite test and you may have to uh, you may have to get a couple frames of bees you may not get enough off of one frame your goal is 300 bees so here's our frame of brood not a lot of bees on it it's tough when it's so hot outside you'll often have pretty low populations uh, when it's really hot because all the bees are out foraging uh, or they're kind of at the bottom of the hive to help keep it cool um, but an important step is to look for the queen you don't want the queen to be on the frame that you're shaking bees off of because that would be a shame because the bees are gonna not survive so I've got my frame of bees. I'm shaking them off. You don't have to move that quickly. You mostly want nurse bees. And so the foragers will fly away. Uh, the nurse bees will stay on the page. And then you just shake them into that container. Now, there's a fill line on the container that shows how many bees you need to get to that 300 bee threshold. And so you want to keep shaking them in. Usually it takes about two frames of bees to, uh, to get to that 300 bee uh, threshold. So I'm not seeing the queen. The queen's not on this frame. So I'm going to repeat the process. Shake the bees. Funnel them up. And dump them in. So if you're worried about your hive uh, and losing 300 bees, I mean, keep in mind, most hives that are good and strong have, you know, 20 to 50,000 bees. So a loss of 300 bees isn't really going to hurt them at all. And broa mites being out of control um, will absolutely kill your hive. So a test is well worth it. So I've got the lid back on. Um, I'm going to kind of swirl that alcohol around for... Um, just 30 seconds or so uh, to make sure that we are rinsing all those varroa mites off of those bees. And then we're gonna look in the bottom of this container and take a look at how many varroa mites we've got. Now, when you've got 300 bees in a sample, anything, you, you know, over two mites per 100 bees is typically considered a problem. So if you've got, you know, six mites, if we find six mites in this test, then we're gonna need to do something about it. If I don't, if I've got under six, 
then I'm gonna continue monitoring this hive. I'll probably check it again in a month for varroa mite levels. But um, you know, I might not I might not need to treat yet. So let's let's see what we've got here. So <laughs> Well, we've got quite a few mites. I don't know if you guys can see them or not, but uh, there are probably about 10 mites or so, and you can see the little specks here in the bottom. You may not be able to see it on the camera really well, but they're very obvious looking at them. So, you know, I'm at, you know, three to four mites per hundred bees in this hive. So I'm gonna pull this honey here in the next week. And then with mite levels that are that high, I'm gonna go ahead and do a mite treatment um, probably here in the next week or so, I'll, I'll do a treatment. And we'll talk later about, and you can see our other resources on what types of treatments to use. But, um, you know, it's interesting because this hive still looks great. I mean, there's still two boxes packed full of bees, so they're handling the mites pretty well. Um, you know, we try to get bees and breed and select for mite resistant bees, but even though they're handling it well right now, those varroa mite levels are gonna to continue to climb through the summer and will probably reach a point at which the hive, no matter how resistant it is, can't survive. So we're gonna take some action on this one. We'll probably try to use something natural like a hop guard um, or apigard first. And if that doesn't work, you know, we'll kind of move up the IPM uh, uh, pyramid and, and find something uh, that'll really work um, if, if necessary. So. Anyway, good to test, it's good to know. If you don't test, you don't know, don't rely on visual cues to see if your hive has a problem or not. Um, and so now we'll get this honey off and get this hive taken care of in the next week or so.